Welcome to Ball and Play, presented by Baseball News Club. We cover everything with a ball and stick around the world. We cover Major League Baseball, to international, Dominican, Australian, to Korean. We also cover NCAA Baseball Division I and softball, all the way on down, Little League softball, to T-ball. We cover over the line, wiffle ball, anything with a ball and stick. We will cover it here at Ball and Play. Please stop right now. I need you to subscribe. Please comment and also turn on your notifications. Thank you very much. And let's get started with this journey we call baseball. Welcome, welcome to Ball and Play, presented by Baseball News Club. This is your host, Sesma, and this is the greatest day on earth ever. Major League Baseball is back on the map, Jack. We are back. CBA is signed. Super excited. This is going to be an action-packed show. This is episode number 10. Um, please uh, download us. We're all over the place for downloads. Just go Google us, Ball and Play. Uh, growing every week. We appreciate all your support. Um, you could locate us, Baseball News Club, on YouTube. That is our main channel. We have almost 700 videos posted there. We post everything we can for you. We make videos for you. Uh, again, this is everything with the ball and stick. We've got a great show today. We're going to talk a little bit college. We're going to talk about uh, the Mexican Baseball League along with uh, KBO and, and Nippin. Just for a brief moment, obviously this is going to be a super loaded MLB is back episode. We're going to talk about this new CBA then we're going to go into the free agents and how those are impacting the teams. This is going to be a great episode. You don't want to miss it. And moving forward every week, we're going to be doing the same thing, guys. We're going to really be focusing until the season starts, uh, ranking the teams, how the teams are going to be with all these pickups. There's been a lot of crazy stuff going on even today. Um, I mean, dude, okay, you want to know what we're talking about? We're going to be talking a lot of, about a lot of people. We're going to break down Rob Manfred. You know, watching him at the podium doing the announcement on this is very interesting. There was a lot of things I read into and I read in between the lines on. We'll talk about that. Jocelyn Allo. Hey, new NCAA uh, softball record. Let's just jump into it, man. I'm not even going to tell you about the topics because you guys already know about the topics. We're talking MLB. Jocelyn Allo, Oklahoma, last year's champions. She's been stuck on 95 career home runs. She is now hit number 96 the other night. She's now officially the greatest home run hitter. An NCAA, uh, double, uh, NCAA Division One or any softball for that matter, and she still got the rest of the season. She's going to end up like with a buck ten or maybe a buck fifteen. Congratulations to her! And it was a mashed home run. If you go to our IG account, you can see it in our stories. We posted it, and it was really great. Um, you got to see the pictures of her being crowned by the former home run leader career. So congratulations to her. That's just awesome. Uh, Girl softball is on fire right now and then uh, let's move on to uh, you know i want to talk about ncaa men's and girls and break it down but honestly uh the top 25 doesn't come out to tuesday and today's monday night i'm getting you guys this uh podcast early uh, i want to remind everyone you got ml <clears throat> or mbl mexican league kbo is already doing spring training they're already starting up nip and schedules coming out so there's there's three other leagues so again guys i always encourage you support the game support little league support softball support wiffle ball blitz ball over the line support anything with a bat and stick this is the rabbit hole you want to go down in life come join me in the dark dungeons of fucking baseball it is crazy down here and this is why i do this podcast i don't want to just talk and be all funny and talk about just baseball and you know i would we're going to grow we're going to get more we're going to get a lot of hosts on here but at the same time, I just want to talk about everything with the ball and stick. So that's why I'm all over the map. But that's why you guys listen to me. And again, thank you for all of our uh, followers and downloaders. Uh, we've had a really good week this week. A lot of downloads. Pandora, thank you for all the Pandora listeners. I'm talking directly to you. iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Firefox. Firefox. And, you know, there's some Apple Podcasts and Chrome and stuff like that. Uh, there's actually uh, Alexa out there. Yeah, Alexa is one of our popular areas. We're popular over... Uh, United States, uh, Alaska, a lot of downloads in Alaska, man. I love it. And we got Australia, we got Europe, um, and all over the map. So we want to thank all of our followers. We really, really do appreciate it. So let's move on to other news. 
um, or stay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm all over the map. I'm super excited to talk baseball, guys. I'm just trying to get to it. Um, <clears throat> but again, just because baseball is starting up, don't forget about the NBL, the KBO, Nippin. Don't forget about the minor leaguers, guys. And, uh, you know, continue to support. I know we're going to be totally saturated with the MLB because of the free agent freaking frenzy going on. <clears throat> but we got to continue to support those. You can't just support one sport. And this kind of is directly at those putzes out there, those idiots that sit there and go, oh, girl softball is not a sport, you know, or it's not baseball. Dude, go play girl softball. Quit being a coward. You'll get smoked out in the field by these girls. Uh, don't even go there. But I just don't understand how anyone would be so dumb and ignorant to it's just a sport. And guess what? Those guys are going to have daughters who are going to play softballs and they're going to have to go endure it. So, you know what? Why even bother? It's a sport. I support over the line, wiffle ball, blitz ball, all college, all international, any type of a sport you can get out there with a ball and a stick. Freaking do it, man. Just do it, guys. Love it. I'm so happy uh, uh, baseball's back. But on a sad note, Odalis Perez was found dead of a heart attack. Uh, If you guys remember Odalis, he was in Major League Baseball starting in 1998 with Atlanta. If you guys remember, he came up. And he bats left, throws left. He's a Dominican Republic player. He pitched until 2008 when he was 30. He had a great season in all-star season 2002 with the Dodgers going 15 and 10 with the three ERA. Uh, He was a workhorse. There was a large part of his career. He was just a workhorse pitcher. And uh, his ERA wasn't the greatest towards the end, but he was kind of a fan favorite. A lot of people liked him. He wasn't, you know, uh, the greatest player because – you know, you got LA's got some good pitching, but anyhow, uh, condolences out to his family. It always sucks when you hear about a young baseball player passing on, but <clears throat> anyhow, moving on to other news. CBA has been signed guys. Let's just jump into it. I, I mean, I, I really didn't write anything <laughs> other down and other than this. So, um, let's jump into it. CBA was signed. Let me say it again. CBA is signed. We're good for a while, guys. So what does that mean for us? Well, we've been following it. It's revenue sharing. It's arbitration. You know, it's everything to do with, obviously, money. But a lot of the young talent in Major League Baseball, it's just the way the sport has grown. It just dictates making more money. And not just that, the owners, the industry grew. So it just makes sense. When an industry has grown, then the people that are part of that industry making the money should get those pay raises. So... Let's talk about it real quick. The minimum salary has been agreed upon for the new CBA. This is awesome, guys. Five more years. <clears throat> now, we talked about it last week. I was really hard on Rob Manfred and MLB. Well, guess what? Now it's time for MLB to get involved now with the issues. Instead of waiting for the CBA to expire, if we work on this for the next five years, guys, and we work together... We're not going to have a problem with the CBA. We're just going to keep on going. But you know what? This seems like at some levels that Major League Baseball and Rob Manfred uses this as a tool for marketing and advertisement. So we get attention. I don't know. I know that's not probably the real reason, but it just doesn't make sense. It's their job and the Players Association. I put this onus on the players too, but I, I believe the players come to the table more than the owners. Is, you know, if we keep working on this year to year and we talk about the issues and that way when we go into the CBA, we won't have this problem. But this is something that was like Rob Manfred talked about. A lockout is a tool that is used to make a deal. And same with deadlines. Deadlines are used to make deals. And it's a smart thing to do. Do deadlines with your friends. I encourage you guys. Just try to give a friend or two deadlines this week. Watch what happens. I guarantee you're going to be like, wow, I really control that situation. I got what I wanted. It's smart. But anyways, we're going down a different rabbit hole. Super freaking pump. Baseball's back, guys. God dang, man. Ah, so excited. Players are reporting. Okay, we're getting into that. Hold on. Let me get. Jeez, I'm all over the map. I'm seriously shaking right now. My hands are clammy. I'm super excited. I feel like uh, David Dobrik. I get like David, but I'm so excited, guys. I'm really, I can barely talk to you. I can barely even stay focused on my (laughs) script right here. I'm super pumped, man. I love baseball, just like you guys love baseball. It's just exciting. And the teams. We got expanded play. Okay, Okay, let me get back into it. God damn it. Okay. So, anyways, uh, the salaries increased from seven hundred thousand, and they'll go up subsequently each year until two thousand twenty-six, where it hits off at seven eighty. So that's the highest the players have ever been paid. I mean, dude, you can come in there, 
and be like a knuckleballer and make the league minimum in 700000 That's sweet. Um, competitive balance tax threshold. That 2022 is 230. It ends up at 244. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't care about that. The pre arbitration bonus pool, that's what we cared about. That's $50 million. So, MLB and the MLB Players Association jointly developed this, a statistical model to allocate, allocate these funds. Awesome. So, under this system, now, but we'll compare it to last year or years before, the uh, National League Cy Young Award winner Corbin Burns would have seen his salary jump from 608000 to $4.2 million last season with these pre arbitration pool bonus pool. Uh, like Rookie of the Year, Randy Rosarina and Jonathan India would have seen their respective salaries more than triple in 2021. So as a player, you're going, this is win-win. And this is what the players were talking about with the owners, going to say, no, man, you know, you got to reward these guys that do these things. You know, it doesn't make sense that you're going to pay me a lot of money and then the year I get a Cy Young, I don't get paid any different. You do in some respects because you get contract incentives. But this makes sense underneath this uh, current CBA. It makes sense to increase. I mean, come on, you win a Cy Young and you only make 608000 Come on, man. That makes sense. And I think all of us would agree with that. Uh, draft lottery. Top six selections will be awarded via lottery. Odds will be based on the reverse order of winning percentage. With the bottom three clubs, each has 16.5%. This is good. This is leading up to something, guys. This is the non-18 non-postseason clubs will be eligible through revenue sharing. Pays will be ineligible to receive lottery selections in three consecutive years. Why non-pays will be ineligible to receive lottery selections in consecutive years. This is building to something. This is this is part of something bigger. And I'll talk about this in a little bit. This Okay, I'm going to talk about it now. This goes into... It's all part of... Uh, service time manipulation and getting players to be playing sooner. Uh, the draft lottery, along with the new pre-arbitration bonus pool, that's, I mean, as an owner, they're probably going to want to manipulate that, but as players, this is this is big, guys. International draft. Yeah! Um, so, they're going to do international draft uh, July 25th, 2022. Put that on your calendar. I'll try to remind you guys. Major League will eliminate the qualifying offer system. Thank God for free agents. Even You know what's funny is even Trevor Bauer talked about this. And I've talked about this. The qualifying offer is the stupidest thing the sport's ever had. It's just a slap in the face. It's a waste of freaking time. It's just a media stunt. And I'm so glad it's gone. It really is the stupidest thing. So qualifying offer system. Shoot by. Um international draft will be 20 rounds yeah 600 plus selections and the compensation earned by amateurs has increased 20 million annually so dude it's this is feeding into us growing the sport they're putting a draft for international players they've increased the money there's a bunch of rounds there'd be bonuses for guaranteed draft players um so everything's great and also clubs from certain growth countries. So less countries with less than 0.5% of signings in the previous three sign-in periods will receive additional selections and incentivize scouting and signing in the emerging market. So it's also designed in the international draft to encourage uh, other countries economically to invest and grow the sport of baseball. This is something small that we look at it, me and you, and go, eh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, tell me who's been signed. You know, I really care less about that. The big picture this grows baseball. The This is great. The World Baseball Classic. I love the World Baseball Classic. It got canceled because of stupid ass. Um, oops, sorry guys. Bumped my microphone. Because of the stupid ass uh, Corona. But this, again, is all part of why they started World Baseball Classic. Uh, this is part of the growth of baseball. This is all positive, guys. There's nothing negative about what happened with the international draft. I always try to bring you guys on my Instagram international stuff all the time. I follow Lightum and L ABL and everything in off season for you. This is awesome. This is going to make it better. We're going to start seeing more of these games in the market. This is good times, guys. Uh, rule changes beginning 2023. A committee comprised of four active players, six members appointed by MLB, and one umpire. Hopefully not Angel Hernandez, his dumb ass. Uh, we'll be tasked with adopting changes for playing rules such as a pitch clock, base size, defensive position, and automatic strike zone. Now, <clears throat> we know the automatic strike zone has been in the works because it's been coming up through the ranks through the minor league system. 
Uh, it's very interesting. Very interesting. I really don't. I, I'm just not wrapping my brain because my brain's on other things more important. I'm just not wrapping my brain around the whole base size thing. Pitch clock. I guarantee the pitch clock is going to be part of every single CBA for the rest of our lives, guys. So it's just one of those stupid things. Defensive positioning is going to be the hot button talk now because you no longer have DH to talk about, really, you know, other than the positives of it. But now defensive positioning, you watch. I'm calling it right now, guys. It's going to be the hot button ticket for the next couple years. That's all everyone's going to talk about and argue about is defensive positioning. I promise you, and we're going to come back to this subject again. Other details. Contracts for arbitration eligible eligible players will be guaranteed. Huge. You kidding me? You're going to get guaranteed contracts for when you're eligible for arbitration. That's that's huge, guys. Top prospects who finish first and second rookie of the year voting will receive full year of service. Boom. That is big. You're essentially, I guess this is a, uh, a agreement between both parties. You know, the owners weren't going to agree to adjusting down uh, arbitration or, or players' ability after two, three years uh, for their salary. <clears throat> I'm not explaining this correctly, but you know what I'm saying. Uh, after three years, you know, the top percentage before was eligible for a pay increase. Now they're saying, hey, top prospects first to second rookie year will receive a full year of service. Dude, it, that's basically saying, let's say you're this is your first or second year in the league and you get you play and you qualify for rookie of the year, you're getting a full year of service time? Dude, that's awesome. It's not talking about that year. That's awesome. That is the more service time you can get as a player – that is epic and that gives you incentives for rookies to play better again this ties into a lot of this ties into guys the more we talk about it the manipulation of player service time this is all tying into getting your players out there from opening day getting all that talent out there from opening day that's one of the big issues the players have been pushing this whole time they were really pissed at the whole service time manipulation over this last cba this is a huge huge success this is a big deal for the players this is all pointing in the right directions clubs promoting top prospects to opening day rosters will be eligible to receive draft picks if the player finishes in the top three of rookie year voting or top five mvp cy young voting there we go guys that is what i was just drawn into and wrapping it around it comes full circle that's awesome that is awesome that is what we want oh man amazing uh, rule changes, ah, blah, 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 blah. We already know about the shifting. Um, I like expansion of postseason. Obviously, we've been talking about that. I've been telling you guys all along for many, many podcasts. And a lot of you guys will listen to me or know what I'm talking about right now. And you're going, yep, Chris, we heard you. Quit bragging and keep moving, dude. Um, I told you that they already came to agreement on the DH in the postseason months ago. Because they never talked about it. And it already snuck out in the media saying they already had an agreement on that. That wasn't the issue. The issue was all about the luxury tax, revenue sharing, uh, pre-arbitration years, all that fun stuff. And boom goes the dynamite, guys. So, expanded postseason. God damn it, man. Expanded postseason. That bugs me. It bugs me because I wish we had it last year. I wish we had expanded postseason last year it just i don't know i'm glad it's here but it just sucks and and for people that don't want it to be expanded listen man you do want it expanded this isn't 1950 where we don't have what 15 teams or whatever this is the modern day baseball and this goes into expansion major league baseball is expanding two more teams right now guys it's been going on for years it's going to happen and i guarantee it's going to happen probably within the cba so you have to have expanded playoffs. It's just preparing. And then we just talked about when I've been digging this information to you guys, international growth. The sport is growing. Anyone that's in business, anyone that's taken any business classes, anyone that is in management and supervision know exactly what I'm talking about. This is how a business operates. You are building. Sometimes it takes a while. But by having all of our tentacles out there, um, this is great for the sport. And it's just the sport is continuing to grow the way the CBA is designed and the way we talked about getting the talent in there quickly and just the rule changes and 
mainly the CBA. I mean, now it's incentivized. You know, there's more salaries, so players are going to try harder. And then allowing the rookies to be able to play on opening day and the talent to show off early and incentivize them with more money and a proper structure to the bonus pool, this is growth. And this is what baseball is about. So it's great that it's back. I mean, we would have had, what, the Blue Jays? Maybe Seattle? I mean, they were right neck neck. Blue Jays would have got that last spot. And then you would have had the Reds. I don't know, man. That sounds pretty dynamite to me. And then the Reds and Phillies were right there neck and neck, so it could have been the Phillies or so. Maybe the Padres, but the Padres were tanking it. Expand the playoffs, guys. Who doesn't want that scenario? Let's talk more. Now, Rob Manfred, when he announced this, and the reason why I want to talk about this is I want to break down a little bit what he was talking about. And it really was interesting because I'm into psychoanalyzing and I do little things like that on the side. I like to look at people, how they talk, how they react, but not only so uh, actually before before I continue, you know, please subscribe guys, please comment as I go through the stuff. I really like if you guys comment on YouTube uh, on the stuff or go to ball and play on IG and comment on it. But so Rob made the announcement and as Rob was going through the announcement, he, he, it, the way he was sounding and stuff, I, I rewatched it a few times. And I took some notes and I'm going to run through it quickly because I think as if you're new to the sport, if you're trying to understand the big picture of the sport, I don't understand everything, but I got a pretty good grasp of shit. But when I look at Rob and the way he talked, you have to remember, and he started right away, already started painting that this is not Major League Baseball. I'm not Rob Manfred. This is what he was talking like. He was like, this is a corporation. These are our employees. I'm glad our employees came to the table and gave us feedback so we can make this job for them easier. That's how he came across. He immediately started talking about players. He almost took entertainment credit in a way. It was like he was thanking the players for their participation. And I'm sitting there going, how freaking arrogant. And again, this goes into why fans hate this guy. I mean, he, I mean, nobody likes Rob Manfred. Let's just get that out there. He And there's a lot of fans and players that are just so sick of him. And this is how he started. And I was like, oh, man, this isn't going to end well. He's already acting like, you know, he's like thanking the players for their participation. You know, it's almost like talking down. And he was just trying to come across like, hey, we're the owners. They're the employees. We're glad they came to the committee meeting. It was great. It just, I just feel like there was a different way he could have said it. Um, But this is the first time. And he brought it up, and I've just talked about it. This is the first time we've had a service time manipulation system. This is a big step forward, guys. And for those of you that are still not wrapping your brains around that, this means these great players that we've drafted that are sitting in the minors, they're not going to be manipulated to come up to the min- – uh, their service time's not going to be manipulated in the, big, in the big show in Major League Baseball because now it's designed different to not have that. And that was a big gripe with the players. They didn't want a Chris Bryant situation occurring with these young players. We want to get them there in opening day. And as fans, that's one of your favorite things is when you draft players. You're so excited to get them through the system and get to the major leagues. It's, you know, that's what a true fan is to me is when I talk to a fan and they know the minor league system really well and they know these players coming up and they know their organization. That's a baseball fan, man. And I love that. And this is going to allow us to grow the sport because we're going to have the ability to see these players play more now versus waiting for the end of the season and all that other crap, you know? So that is a good thing. Now, again, here's the funny thing is Rob fielded questions. One of the first questions was from a female um, reporter. She was awesome. She nailed him to the freaking fire. I mean, she put his feet to the fire and she nailed him. She was asking about, essentially, if I wrap it up in an eggshell, how can you enforce it? Because it is, per team, still responsible. is isn't like Rob is supposed to be policing it. The Players Association will end up policing it. But that was her question. And Rob really did get nervous. This is the one time during the speech that he kind of fumbled and he tried generalizing. And he kind of said, well, clubs will try to do the right thing. So 
he made it sound like it's the team responsibility. He didn't really say, and what I wanted to say is, and I feel like this is the right step forward still, don't get me wrong, but I feel like this is baby steps, not stride with this topic of service time manipulation. But by him saying it like that, it sounds like it's a team responsibility. And Rob, what I wanted to hear from Rob Manfred was to go into like, oh, the service time manipulation system is designed like this after first notice. It is reviewed by the board. The board is part of this many people. And then we look into, was this something that the team did intentionally or is this just part of the process because there was injuries and they had to bring them up. They couldn't bring them up. I just wanted to hear him elaborate a little bit more on that. But all he said is, you know, the clubs will try to do the right thing. That doesn't bring a lot of confidence to me. That worries me that we're going to have service time manipulation. Again, that and the shift is going to be the hottest topics moving forward. Part of the negotiation, and Rob talked about this, was time and economic leverage to find com- common ground. So it's like it's all part of making deals. They make it into this big old system to get to a goal. And it's a good thing. But sometimes I think there's drinking so much of the Kool-Aid, you know, and that's what frustrates us as fans. Like, get this crap done. Now you got five more years. Figure it out now. Don't wait till last second and put us through this again. We don't want this as fans. However, one thing that came out of it, and I, he, he almost said it. He almost said it grudgingly, like he didn't want to say it. But he, I don't know if he slipped it out. But he goes, one of the things I'm supposed to do. And when he said this, I'm like, holy crap! This is actually part of the CBA. This was a discussion from the players association. This was a topic that was discussed and I bet you that scorned him and pissed him off. And that's why you see him act the way he does. I'm telling you, I'm totally guarantee I'm nailing this, but he said, one of the things I'm supposed to do is promote good relationships with players. And I've not been successful. Boom. Duh. Captain obvious. Welcome to the freaking party, buddy. But I would appreciate it if he would have said it different. Like one of the things I'm supposed to do is promote a good baseball relationship with players and fans. And I've not been successful, you know, in that area. That's what I would like. Again, he just doesn't get it. And then this again, I'm just critical of him because he screws up all the time. Even when he in conversations, you know what, man, I'm glad that he realizes that. And I feel like when he says one of the things I'm supposed to do is promote good relationship. He's still kind of like, he's such a little baby. You know, he just, you could tell, well, I'm supposed to do this. I'm supposed to be nice to people. It's like, dude, you still don't get it. And I hope Rob listens to this podcast one day and wonders why. Maybe he doesn't give a crap that people like him. It has nothing to do with him and his ego and his, that has nothing to do with it. You're a commissioner. You have an expectation despite how you want to create that expectation for yourself and create your own image, that's not what you're supposed to do. And that's why you're failing. That's why people don't like you. And that's why your popularity is rock bottom because you still haven't embraced the love of baseball first. Who cares about the business? You still have to love the sport, man. Why do you think the players association players association is so awesome? Cause you have Tony Clark, a former MLB player leading the charge, dude, yeah, that's why it works. That's why Players Association is one of the biggest unions in the United States. Dude, fact. The numbers they pull in and what they've been doing because of Tony Clark and that crew. But when you listen to Rob, he still kind of just, it kind of pisses him off that he didn't get his way. So I feel like he, you know, then he was also saying that, I feel like he's talking at both sides of his mouth. One side, he says, we must use the lockout tool to get an agreement. And then the other side, he says, we got to make the agreement before expiration. It's like, dude, make up your freaking mind. Yeah, we now I get it. I get what he's saying. He's saying in theory, uh, during this time period, you got to do it before this. And then when it's in there, we got to use the lockout tool to get an agreement because, you know, but it's like, well, wait, did you have the idea of trying to make agreement before the expiration? Did you try just as hard before or did you just start trying when the players locked out on or when the owners locked out in early December? 
again, it's just one of those things, you know, when I listen to him talk, I'm like, dude, what are you talking about? So let's keep, keep going. And I'm going to get this done with, um, he even put in a little baseball pun. He, he was basically saying, if we didn't use the lockout as a tool, we wouldn't be able to slide, see how to use that pun into the season. We'd still be locked out. So he's kind of contradicting himself, but it is one of the things I did like him, like what he said is he said, MLB is one of the best unions in America, the ML uh, Players Association. Fact. That is true. They are a great union. Um, he also liked to talk about the use of deadlines as part of the collective bargaining. So that's why they used those and why they threatened because they wanted to get it done. So he believes that's the way to make deals. It's an art form. So he talked a lot about it. It's an art form. It's like, dude, you, I don't give a shit about your art quit ruining the sport man the sport is bigger than your damn art form i get what he's saying though if i'm making deals yes but you, you're ruining the sport man you need to you only do this because this is a necessity because you didn't get it done before the deadline that's the only reason he uses this wordage it's excuses deadlines they move the process absolutely but he did seem frustrated certain questions but i believe both sides did work hard during the term uh during this agreement Opportunities to build better relationships. MLPA is, you know, is a market-based system. So that was one thing he was talking about, how that was part of, and people need to understand how the market-based system works in relation to the Players Association, how they grow and how the unit operates. So good stuff, guys. Good stuff. Now, again, here we go. We got designated hitter. A lot of people were kind of whining about that. Now, remember what I've said before, we're pretty much 50% here. Um, in the National League as a player, uh, DH is here, guys. You're going to love DH, and it's not going to really change as much as you think it is uh, it, because we're pretty much 50% here. Yeah, I'm repeating myself. Uh, pitchers are usually getting one or two at-bats anyhow. And then after that, pinch hitters. So you don't really have pitchers going late in innings, and the game's not designed that way. You're designed now to go four to six. If you're lucky, you get a quality start after six. But, you know, bring in the bullpen. That's what it's all about. And sorry, animal rights people, bullpen pisses you off. I'm not going to change every damn thing about baseball. But anyways, when we talk DH, let me give you an example. And those of you, and this is the, those of you out there that are for DH, you're going to be, this is just going to give you more fuel for the fire. So your friends that are anti-DH, you can just slam them down. I'm giving you ammo, guys. Giving you ammo. And for those that are non-DH, I'm just trying to educate you. And I am I was the same way at one point in my life. I didn't want DH. But I've grown to accept it. Zach Wheeler played in 32 games. Uh, pitched, God, I think upwards almost 900 batters faced. In 73 plate appearances. Uh, he equaled 2.28 at-bats a game. So take 32 games, that's 73 plate appearances. You do the math. Uh, I mean, it's like hangover. You know, you don't need a book. You don't need to be Rain Man to figure that out. So two at-bats, and players are getting four or five a game. Now with the, you know what I'm saying? And that's Zach Wheeler. A front line should have been Cy Young, in my opinion. Um, I, I like a pitcher of his stature that plays more innings and faces more batters to prove his worth. Uh, not to take anything away from Milwaukee's pitcher, but I, I preferred Zach Wheeler as my Cy Young. So again, you do the math. It's, you know, it, it's already here. It's not going to change as much as it is. There's not really that great many hitting pitchers out there. So this is a bold move, Cotton. This is what we need. Uh, Trevor Bauer. Let's move on to Trevor Bauer news. Administrative leave. They extended it. Major League Baseball still can't figure out what to do with Trevor Bauer, and they're just embarrassing themselves with this. Uh, Trevor on mo on a, excuse me on YouTube has been showing Dodger players showing up to practice with him. He's he's ready to go, man. Trevor's been that's Trevor though. He does his workout year round. He knows how to condition his body to be ready, and he's ready to go, man. He's spitting up that ball really quick, and his workout warehouse where you could see our momentum there's a lot of stuff that's shown on there but uh yeah they still extended it so major league baseball still trying to figure out what to do with domestic violence and again there's never been a case like this in major league history where sex was part of the equation of the domestic violence so it's a very hard thing uh it's two different stories from both camps between her and trevor uh they didn't approved the restraining order the judge rejected it and la county didn't file charges against him so how they're still extending his administrative leave 
I do not know. Um, St. Louis signed Drew Vergen from Nippon Ham Fighters to a two-year deal. Uh, they already got a good rotation with Jack Flaherty, Adam Rainwright, depending what you get out of him because he's older, Steve Matz, Dakota Hudson, and Miles uh, Mokulas. Uh, so they signed him. That's good. I mean, St. Louis still, they got a solid pitching staff. It's a pitcher stadium. It is, you know what I'm saying? So, but hey, we got a full 162. Um, bad news for the Padres, Fernando Tatis Jr. I, there's not confirmed, but they're saying that it was due to a motorcycle accident. He, he's hurt, uh, wrist fracture. He's out two to three months at the best. So huge blow to the start of the Padres uh, season. And that's going to put a major amount of pressure on them because he's the main guy. He's their MVP. He's one of the best players in baseball. Now, the thing that bugs me about the Tatis announcement is someone like Ben Verlander, he makes this dumb comment about the lockout, blaming his injury or trying to allude to the fact because we had the lockout and players weren't ready to get ready, he, he got injured. That's so stupid. If it comes down to Tatis was riding a motorcycle, that has nothing to do with the lockout, man. I'm not a fan of Ben Verlander. I mean, I think he has a job just because of his brother being in the major leagues, but not a fan of that guy. Um, other signings and trades, right-handed pitcher Chris Bassett from New York to Oakland. Oakland's making some moves, but the big one today was Josh Donaldson to New York with a four-player trade. Josh Donaldson had one of the biggest contracts in Minnesota history. Um, he's on his way. I think that's a dude. If Josh Josh Donaldson's one of those guys, he just needs to be in the right place, and, and he he's a solid player. I mean, right place, right time, solid player. You know, we've all heard about those solid players up and down the lineup. You know who else is a solid player? Your mom. Uh, Jacob DeGrom, he opts out. So after this season, he's going to be a free agent. That's going to be very interesting. And he's we talked about it before with fantasy. Is he going to be healthy? New York needs him absolutely unequivocally. Uh, I think they have to be careful with him bringing him back. You want to make sure if he's going to get 15 or 20 games out of him, make sure it's the end of the season, not the beginning. You need him. They Obviously, they needed him down the stretch last year, and they didn't have him. Joe Kelly, the Chicago. Josh Harrison, the Chicago. Joe Kelly. Dude, everyone loves Joe Kelly. A healthy Joe Kelly is a great pitcher, and in that staff, hey, man, that sounds – that might be a good thing. That might be a good thing uh, for Joe Kelly to go to Chicago. Um, they got a great pitching staff. Uh, twins get Sonny Gray. And minor league Francis Pegoria from the Reds for first-round pick an 18-year-old Chase Petty. Uh, Petty's that special arm you guys have heard about. He's a high school pitcher. He touched triple digits um, in high school on the mound. Supposedly there hasn't been that many high school recorded. Uh, Daniel Espinino bumped 100 in 2019-2016. Riley Pint, I think, hit 102 in a workout. And Lucas Gilito, uh, triple digits in 2012. So before that, it didn't really happen that much to touch 100. But uh, that Petty is part of that trade. So interesting. Very interesting. Uh, Boston signs Matt Stram. Hey, I think that's a great move for Boston. We're going to talk more about that as we go on each week because we're going to add that to that. But one of the great things about the CBA, sorry, I forgot and didn't mention this before, um, All-Star game tied after nine innings, then it's decided by the HR Derby. That is probably one of the greatest things that come out. Uh, if you're someone that remembers Bud League, a lot of frowning upon him with the All-Star game years ago where he stopped the All-Star game before letting it go into extra innings. Uh, this is awesome. So tight after nine, HR Derby. Man, I'm down for that, man. That is awesome. I, that is awesome. Um, let's see. Uh, man, Andrelton Simmons, shortstop, signs with Cubs. Dude, that's a great move. And if and Simmons had a down year with hitting last year, but if he's going to be about a 265 hitter, dude, if you can get him to 265, 275 and play shortstop for you, that's a huge deal. That's an awesome deal. You got a lock in shortstop that's really good. That's, dude's a vacuum. And, you know, you're not going to get a lot of pop, but hey, man, he could fit in Chicago. I think that's a really good move for Chicago. And what's funny is I didn't think Chicago would be competitive. They seem to be making noise. You know, they are making some noise right now. So, free agency is going to be very interesting because there is talk. There is talk. I don't know if I should even, because you know I don't like to talk about this stuff, but there is talk about uh, a certain player going to the Cubs. Yeah. A certain player named Freddie Freeman. 
but anyways, there's so many people that are after Fred Freeman. That's another thing. Uh, uh, the Braves today signed Matt Olson from Oakland. So that's huge. So bye-bye, Freddie. Uh, a lot of Atlanta fans are crying today. There's your answer. Freddie's onward and upward. So now it's all about who he's signing with. It's going to be exciting. Uh, Clayton Kershaw signed a one-year deal with Dodgers. That's an awesome thing to do. He's Let's see what you can get out of Clayton. I don't think he should be leaving L.A. It's just he is all L.A. Carlos Rodon goes to San Francisco. That helps San Francisco big time, big time. Um, so those are some of the big trades, but we're going to break those down more uh, each podcast. And what was the other thing? Oh, yeah. Um, Major League hosts games to- or tours in these locations over the next five years. Mexico, Asia, Puerto Rico, Dominican Republic, London, and Paris. And I don't know why there's no ABL. There's no Australia. So it doesn't make sense. Uh, I don't know what's going on with our uh, partnership with Australian baseball, but they're not included in these locations over the next five years. Now I want to uh, digress back to the Josh Donaldson uh, four-player trade to New York. Now, similar offensive part factors in New York and Minnesota. They're very similar. So I think the former MVP is 36 years old. Uh Last year, his 3.2 war was the sixth best in his career. So not the greatest, but he can still put up some really good numbers. So I think for New York, if Josh Donaldson can play 130 games, put up 20, 30 homers, it's a win-win. He could be a really good fantasy ball player to pick up because you've seen what kind of numbers he can put up on teams. Uh, And he had a decent season last year, not his best, but he's getting older. So we'll see. Now, the big trade was Matt Olson, like we talked about. Matt Olson has been traded to the Atlanta Braves, so obviously Freddie Freeman is going elsewhere. Now, when you look at the factors, uh, Oakland Athletic Stadium, that's a a pitcher stadium. Um, You're looking at third worst park in the park factors. If you look at the park factor rating, a fifth worst for HRs. So in other words, it's a pitcher's ballpark. So if you're a pitcher, uh, if you're a batter, those are the worst spots you want to go to is like Oakland. Atlanta is ranked 16th in HRs and their park factor is ranked six. And then you combine the players. They'll be around Matt Olson, uh, the Cunha, you know, everybody on that team, um, Riley, they're a loaded team. So the champs are still looking good. Uh, I'm curious if the fans will embrace Matt Olson because Freddie Freeman is not just a, someone that is very much beloved in Atlanta. He's very much beloved across Major League Baseball. So it's very curious how that's going to pan out in Atlanta. I think they're going to take him with open arms. But let's move on to some other news. Uh, Pete Alonso flipped his car three times. Yeah, Polar Bear. And here's the crazy thing is uh, Pete Alonso flips his car and Tatis gets injured and Pete Alonso walks away fine. Uh, I guess he rolled it three times in an auto accident. Which is, that's freaking crazy. I don't have much more details on that, but I'm glad Polar Bear is okay. But then again, the odd thing is Tatis gets injured uh, riding a motorcycle. P. Alonso rolls the car three times and doesn't get injured. Uh, Nick Castellanos, he posted a picture in his IG, him holding a bat, walking into some construction site like he's getting a new home built. Now, immediately the fans were like, whoo, where is this at? Where is it at? Where is this home being built? Because you figure this home is being built where he's going to play. I felt like there was some Easter eggs in the photo. There is a uh, a scissor lift. If you don't know construction, scissor lifts are those uh, platform lifts to lift you up high so you can do work, get to certain locations on, in a building. There's one in the background with some lettering written on it. Uh, lettering written on it. So I'm just curious if it's just a uh, simple picture. Nick's just teasing his fans or he is uh, giving a hint. Um, so anyways, check it out on his IG, uh, on his IG. I'm like dying to know where Nick Castellanos is going to go. Uh, Cincinnati's a hitter's ballpark. So I got to assume with park factors, uh, that Nick is going to go to a, it's got to go to like a baseball friendly park. Um, it just makes sense. So if he was going to go like the red stadium had the most home runs last year, 130 Orioles would be a nice fit. I mean, think about it. If Nick goes to Baltimore, with Mancini and Baltimore's got uh, up and coming great players. Uh, the catcher they got from Oregon is going to be playing this year, especially with the new 
CBA, how they want their younger players playing. So it's interesting. A lot of home runs hit in those in that stadium. Uh, Colorado Rockies, of course, but Blue Jays, that would be nuts. But Park Factors, um, you're going to be looking at Fenway, Orioles, Nationals. Phillies would be a nice stadium, I think, for him. Uh, that would be a great fit in Philly. I'd love to see him in Philly, but uh, who knows where he's going to go. We'll find out soon. But anyways, I'm going to wrap this up. This one's going to be a little bit short. Thank you very much for listening to Ball and Play. Please subscribe on IG. Please follow us, Baseball News Club, on Instagram and YouTube. Follow us on Instagram for the daily. Uh, We update stuff on our stories all day long, so you're going to be hip on all the news around the world with anything with a ball and stick. This is Sesma signing out. Thank you very much for supporting us. Have yourself a good day. See ya.